Welcome to another video in this mini stencil series. In the last videos we created a model which we unfortunately can't view right now because we reintroduced our backdrop and we have no logic to conditionally show or hide this. Now I explained towards the end of the last video that you can basically open and close the backdrop just like you do it with my model. Now that would be a fine way and might be the best way if you plan on using the backdrop and the model independently. For the sake of this tutorial though, I want to show you how to nest components and make them work together. So let's have a look at how this works in this video. To make the backdrop and the model work together, I'll first of all get rid of the backdrop in my index.html file. It now also might make sense to put them into the same bundle here in the stencil config, but for now I'll leave it as it is. Now I'll go back to my modal then, and there I want to use that backdrop. It will require some refactorings though, to make the modal display at the correct place though, because the whole modal position is positioned in the middle of the page. So if we simply insert my backdrop here, like this, it would be displayed in the totally wrong place, as you can tell if we open, whoops, if we reload the page and open the modal. It would be displayed above of everything. Now to fix this, I'll get rid of the backdrop here and I'll introduce a new component. I'll simply name it my modal bundle. In there, I'll create a my modal bundle.tsx file, obviously. I don't need any styling here. I'll copy the TSX code from my backdrop into there and exchange the tag for my modal bundle and have my modal, get rid of the style URL I mean, because we don't have one, change the class name instead to my modal bundle. Now in the stencil config, again, it would make sense to put them all into the same bundle though. So I will do this and comment out the other one. So I have my modal bundle here. I have mo my modal in there and I will also have my backdrop all in the same bundle and therefore in the same JavaScript file we output. So now with that back to the my modal bundle, I don't want to return null here. I actually want to return my backdrop and my modal here. I can do this by simply outputting my backdrop. No need to add an import because it's a normal HTML element. And I can actually output an array of elements there by using squared brackets and simply wrapping all the elements I want to output. So here my backdrop and then my modal. If I now do this, I can go to the index.html file and there I can simply output my modal bundle. Now, of course, my modal relies on output, uh, on input from the outside. So we can simply pass this input on by adding these attributes to the my modal bundle here and also exposing an open method. So here I would select my modal bundle and call open on that. So we need to support these functionalities. So I need two props and a method. So let's import prop and method and simply replicate what we did in the last video. From the my modal tsx file, I can import the two prop statements here and add it to my my modal bundle class and import the open method with the method decorator. Let's add all of that. For that, we also need to import the element selector, excuse me, decorator, because we need to get access to the my modal bundle element too. So let's also do this here. Now to show backdrop and modal when open is triggered, I simply can use the conditional rendering to decide whether I want to output both elements or not. So whether I want to attach them to the DOM or not. For that I'll use state again in the modal bundler and attach at state with parentheses to show. And by default this could be false. Now when I call open, this show should of course be true and true decides whether we output this array or not. So there again, I'll may have a content variable in render which is null, but if this show is true, then content will actually be 
this array. So I output this array in this case, and I output content here where I return content. So either nothing or backdrop and modal. And for that, I need to go my, to my modal in this SCSS file and remove that display non thing because it should always be visible. It's just not always attached to the DOM. We could now get rid of the open method in my modal TSX. I will leave it in there for reference, but we don't need it anymore. And with that, if we save this and I click open modal, now we see it again. We see show options. We don't see the text though, because we need to pass this on. We already receive it in my modal bundle. We pass it in there from our index.html file with title and content. These are props of my modal bundle. These are also still props of my modal. So all I need to do is pass them on. So on my modal here, I can simply set title equal to with single curly braces, this title referring to the title prop of my modal bundle. And the same of course for content, content equals this content. Now with that, if I now reload this, we see info and so on again and show options also still works. And we can even still close the modal though we do this incorrectly. We still do it by changing the style of my modal TSX or of this modal component. We want to close the whole modal bundle though. And to do this, we actually need to emit our own custom event. So in my modal TSX, I can import one more thing, event. And with that we can, well, you guessed it, create our own event. So just like a button can emit a click, now we can create a custom event our custom component can emit. And in my my modal component, I decorate a property with add event parentheses to create this custom event. Now here we could name this event on close, and this should be of type event emitter which you also need to import from Stancil Core. And since I got a lot of imports there now, I'll quickly restructure this to make it a bit easier to read. So now we also have event emitter there. This is the type of the onclose property, which is decorated with at event. Now on its own, this doesn't do anything, but if we execute close modal handler, I no longer want to change display style. I will set show options to false though, and I will reach out to on close and emit it. Now we could even pass some data with it, which we can then fetch in the component where we listen to this event. But for now, I just want to emit it. In my modal bundle, I now want to listen to this event. And for that, we import listen. Now listen is another decorator, which we can add to a method, for example, to the close modal handler, I add, add listen in front of it and add listen, it's an argument. It needs the name of the event to which I want to listen. And here it's on close. And whenever any of my child components, so either backdrop or by modal emits an event, which is named on close, this method will get executed. So to do this, I will now simply execute this show or not execute it, but set it to false. Remember show is the property determining whether we show or don't show the backdrop and modal. With that, if I now save everything and I reload the page, if I click open modal, we see it. If I click okay, we close everything and I can then reopen it. So this is now our custom modal with nested components communicating with each other. And you can of course see where this goes. This allows you to build powerful custom elements. And in the end, what you use in your HTML project is just this single element. Now combined with some JavaScript code to open it, but that's only because this is an element which we actually need to interact with it to show. A modal is not something you show all the time. But we just import our custom element and we got all that functionality we built into all these nested components out of the box, we can ship this and use this model in every future project, which is pretty amazing in my opinion. That makes it easy to create a set of reusable pieces you can use in any web project. And I will just emphasize this again, including web projects where you use a framework like Angular or something like that. Now, what I still want to show you is in my modal bundle, 
we're listening to on close and correctly you would say what if my backdrop also emitted an on close event but i actually want to do something different on the on close event of the backdrop than on the on close event of the modal now that isn't the case here but it could be the case that you have two conflicting events which have the same name obviously you could pick different names but you can also change listen to clearly define for which element you want to listen, my modal on close. And by separating this with a colon, you define the left part is the element, my modal, you just specify the tag for which you want to listen or on which you want to listen. And then on the right side of the colon is the actual event. And then you conveniently execute this method. Super easy to do, super convenient and gives you powerful tools to structure all your components and have them work together. Now this is of course just a quick introduction to the core features. There is more to Stancil, but this already shows you the power and how you may build components with it. See you in the other videos, hopefully.